Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of the podcast. So, I've got a story what happened to me last week, and I hurt my back quite badly. But uh, fortunately, I managed to fix myself using my techniques that I help fix my TOS with. So, I was jumping in the pool, um, doing some crazy dives, and I managed to lean forward and the dog was struggling to get out the pool so i leaned leaned over picked the dog up and in that motion felt like i slipped a disc in my thoracic spine in the middle somewhere now usually if your back goes out a little bit in your lower back you feel like you can't straighten up and your legs go a bit numb because it pinches the nerve so i had that same feeling but in my in my middle back and it's the weirdest feeling because it's it sent these shooting pains down my arms and down my back and right through to my chest. But at the same time, I was taking my breath away because it felt like every time I breathed in, my rib cage would expand and it was pinching on a nerve and it was a horrible, horrible pain. I was in so much agony that I couldn't stand up. I was, it was making me feel lightheaded. Uh, it made me feel really, really strange. So I went to go lay down, uh, try to stretch myself out and nothing was working. I tried for about two hours and I was in so much pain, I, I just wanted to go home. So I came home and I thought, what am I going to do just to feel a bit better? So I thought, Let me, what do I do for my TOS for, to help my muscles all those times? So step number one, took a hot bath. I just lay there to loosen and relax the muscles. Now that's, that's always step number one is to relax the muscles as best you can because if you go even if you go to a chiropractor or you're trying to roll on the floor with a ball, those muscles go into spasm. As soon as you that vertebra moves slightly and you're pinching a nerve, all your muscles down your back or wherever it is go into spasm around it to protect it. So because it's misaligned, all the muscles spasm out. So if you're rolling in that area in that same spot and you're rolling and rolling, chances are you're not going to really fix yourself because those muscles are so spasmed that you're, you're just rolling on a spasm muscle that doesn't want to relax. So hot bath or a, a hot water bottle, just something to loosen up those muscles. The heat always softens and loosens the muscle. So you want to try to relax yourself on the heat. So I took a bath, made it as hot as I could, lay in it for about an hour. I just, I just took my time just to relax and see if I could click my back in. And uh, lay in the bath, it didn't help. When I got out, I still felt like the nerve was pinching and I couldn't stand up straight. I couldn't breathe properly. So from there, I went to the floor, took a ball, and I just put it to the side of my spine on the rhomboid muscles on the back. It's between the shoulder blade and the spine. You've got your rhomboid muscles. And that's basically the main muscle that's going to spasm out. You've got your spine and erector muscles that also spasm. But when you're rolling on the ball, you'll get all those muscles. So I just try to breathe into it. Now, when you're rolling on the ball doing trigger point therapy, you want to try to keep yourself relaxed while you're rolling up and down on that ball. But another method that I use is breathing into the stretch or breathing into that, that moment of when the ball's on your, on your muscle, you just want to lay there, try to relax as much as you can and breathe. And as you breathe, that's going to push harder onto the ball. But that motion of breathing out and just breathing into that stretch it actually it pushes that muscle onto the ball and it sends signals to the central nervous system that you relaxing that muscle and now there's a pressure there so you'll more than likely find that as you're breathing into it you get a sharp pain because you laying on it heavier the muscles expanding over that ball and it's going to cause that shooting pain on the nerve but you'll find that you'll actually soften that muscle a lot quicker if you roll a little bit, then just keep still, breathe into it, and then roll it again. So I did that for about 20 minutes, half an hour on the floor. Gave myself a break, just took the ball away and just stretched out as best I could on the floor. And just trying to relax my back, relax my spine, just close your eyes and just focus on your breathing. The more relaxed your body is, you're going to trick your central nervous system into just relaxing a little bit more, realizing that there's not a problem and that muscle can relax. So I took the ball away, relaxed my muscle and just breathe, just focus on your diaphragmic breathing. And sometimes if you have that muscle relaxed enough, 
the vertebra will line up, you'll hear a clicking sound, you'll feel a lot better, the nerve pain will go away. If not, take the ball again, loosen it up if you need to use some heat just to soften that muscle and just repeat these steps over and over. Now, when the muscle spasms, you're going to have a lot of inflammation that comes with it. So you're going to have a lot of heat coming off there. You're going to have a lot of, not a lot of swelling, but you could have some swelling. And getting rid of that inflammation also helps. So you can take muscle relaxers and you can take anti-inflammatories, but I don't take any meds. As much pain as I was in, I thought to myself, let me just try, see what I can do before taking the meds. Um, so I started with some lemon water just to flush my body of any toxins and it just keeps everything flowing nicely. So even if you're in a bit of pain, it just, it, through my TOS and, and through everything, through headaches, I always drink lemon water. It just, it just flushes your body out. You feel a bit better, even though you're in pain or whatever you're going through, the, the lemon water just makes you feel a lot better. So I had the lemon water, then I made some turmeric latte. So I usually make turmeric tea with uh, ginger, turmeric, uh, honey, and uh, that usually helps me, but I thought I, d I really didn't feel like making that on the stove and boiling it all down. So what I did was I mixed uh, turmeric, cinnamon, uh, lemon in a little bit of hot water, and then I used the microwave just to heat up some milk, put the two together, and you've got this yellow latte that smells amazing, tastes amazing, and the turmeric helps with inflammation, gets rid of the inflammation in your body, helps the muscles relax, helps you relax. Um, if you're struggling to sleep, you can also drink that. So there are two options to have your turmeric in the latte or have it normal with the ginger and have a normal turmeric tea. But that's great at cleaning out your body, cleaning out your arteries and your veins and everything. You can research research turmeric. And uh, it's it really helps with inflammation. So I had that, rolled the ball, took another bath, and I just repeated these steps. I just basically kept that muscle as soft as I could, drank some turmeric, got the inflammation down, roll on the ball again, lay on the floor and tried relaxing myself. And halfway through the night, it took me a couple hours, but uh, I managed to relax enough that when I was laying on the floor and I breathed in deeply and as I breathed out, my whole spine just clicked and everything felt perfect and I could feel the blood flowing again down my arm. I could feel everything working perfectly. I could breathe properly again without getting that shooting pain. So... As much pain as I was in, I thought maybe I'll have to go to the chiropractor because I really couldn't stand properly and I was in so much agony. I managed to fix myself the same day. I managed to get rid of this inflammation. I managed to get my nerve that was a little bit trapped. I got that flowing and got rid of the pain. And I did that all at home. I didn't take any painkillers, didn't take any ibuprofen or any other, any other anti-inflammatories, which was great. So I used my techniques that I, that I used for my TOS to help myself with this back pain and this agony that I was in. And it was just a reassurance that doing, following these steps that you can fix yourself at home. And I managed to fix myself and recover from TOS. And I managed to recover from this back pain. And it doesn't matter which injury you have or what pain you have. If you just focus and make an effort at fixing yourself, you can get to a certain point. So obviously other people are worse off where they they simply just cannot get themselves better and they need extra things. But uh, that's what's helped me through my TOS because I was desperate and I was phoning around the world and trying to get help and I couldn't. And that's what made me study further and fix myself because I wasn't getting help from the doctors either. They just wanted to operate the whole time. So if you can apply this mindset of fixing yourself when you get injured or you, you're struggling day to day with thoracic outlet syndrome or frozen shoulder or you have some sort of injury back problem where, you, where you're doing a movement and you just, you're just you constantly in pain, think to yourself what you can do, what steps you can take and do small steps. It doesn't have to be crazy stretches and crazy exercises because some of the exercises and stretches that I can do now when I, when I first started doing them, I couldn't move the next day. So you've got to take it slow and steady take little steps because little steps build up to you feeling better. So that's what I've said in all my videos. Just take small steps. Some people overdo things. Some people really can't stretch to where they, they need to be stretching to help themselves and help loosen up the, the joints and the muscles. But if you just do a little bit, if you can't move your arm outwards like this, 
start off with just trying to rotate your thumb outward in front of you. And tomorrow, just do it a little bit further out, try to rotate, get that external rotation. Just simple things till eventually a week or a month down the line, you can take a picture of yourself of how far you could go back. And then in a month's time, maybe you can see that you've gone a lot further back when in your mind you thought you weren't improving at all. But if you can take some photos of yourself and see your range of motion, see where you are, you can see your progress. That's what I was doing. I took a picture of my scapula and my one scapula was winged. My other one was stuck to my ribcage that wasn't working. And it's things that you don't notice. So I would set up the camera behind me, take a picture, see that my back was misaligned. I was very skewed. My one, sh my one shoulder was higher than the other. Simple little things. So that I'd focus on keeping my shoulders straight and sitting back, keeping my posture right because I was very rounded, very rounded shoulders. And all these little things just helped me get better through TOS. It wasn't a magic fix. There are some people think that I just started making videos um, because my TOS probably wasn't as bad. I had TOS for those two years and especially those, those very bad four months, four months where I couldn't leave the house. I would stand up on the floor and want to pass out and have anxiety attacks because the blood flow wasn't flowing. My arm was completely blue and numb. All these things that I went through every day before I even started making videos that I never documented because I couldn't even speak. I was so out of breath and so short of breath the whole time that getting up just to go to the kitchen or just to go take a shower was a mountain to climb. So I, I would be in the lounge constantly. I couldn't lay in bed. I was, I was laying on the floor. I couldn't sleep in bed. I couldn't get comfortable. Too much pressure on my brachial plexus and my arm and upper back. So I was basically living in the lounge, living on the floor, not even being comfortable on the couch. I was literally on the floor. I couldn't draw because my muscle was atrophied in my hand. My bicep and tricep were atrophying so that my arm was getting skinny. So I didn't have a great time. I had a very tough time. And I got to a point one day where I just couldn't anymore. I wasn't doing anything. I was, I was sitting on the floor and just thinking of ways to cope with the pain every day. They put me on Tremadol and that wasn't even helping. Um, it's a morphine-based opiate and it basically made me feel like a zombie and made me sleepy, but the pain was still there and still kept me up. For some reason, the Tremadol didn't help with my pain at all. So I eventually threw those away, got off any medication that I was on, just taking vitamins and trying to dose up with magnesium to keep the muscles functioning properly and lemon water. And that's how I started. I just I started researching and learning so much about the anatomy that I started studying further. And that's how I got into making videos and fixing myself, basically. And when I got to that point, if you go back to my very first video, that was the first time that I felt a little bit better for that day. But if you look at how I looked, I looked ill and sick and couldn't speak. But I had a slight, I had 1% motivation because I strapped my shoulder up with spider tape and it pulled back a little bit. And I felt some sort of relief and that was like the, the happiest day that I had in a long time. So I had that, that tiny bit of hope that I'd feel a bit better. And if you go back to that video, you can see I didn't know how to speak to the camera. I didn't know how to, I, I couldn't think of what to say. And I was just in, a, I was in, I was such a mess. I still hadn't left the, left the house. So I just felt better, but I was still extremely sore and in pain. But I, I had a little bit of hope and motivation to try help people and show them the, the few little things that I was doing back then to help myself feel a bit better. But it was still about a year from there that I actually started feeling a lot better. So I had a few videos where that first video I did, I was looking ill and a mess. The second video was the next day or the day after and I started feeling better and better. I had a few up days, a few bad days. And I always say this, it's like a roller coaster. TOS is like a roller coaster. You'll start feeling better and get yourself to a point and then you do one wrong thing and you're all the way back down and you think to yourself, you're never going to get out of this. And it's like that up and down. So I would have one good day, a few bad days, and those few bad days turn into less and less and I'd have one good day, one bad day and it would just be up and down constantly like that until I would have two good days and then one bad day and then feel okay again for the next two days. And it was just up and down constantly like that. And I just got to a point one day where I could actually leave the house, do a few more things. And I still get a few flare-ups doing a few things if I carried heavy groceries. So I had to be careful. 
And it was just a matter of time. It was just doing the same things over and over, training your nervous system to relax, training your muscles to stay in a more neutral position because that muscle memory is going to throw you right back to where you were. The longer you've had an injury without knowing or the longer you've had TOS, whatever it is, your body's going to, your body's already learned to stay like that. So my bad posture and rounded shoulders was the first thing I'd stretch and feel okay and then look at myself in the mirror and my shoulders were rounded and I'm sitting like this again without even realizing it. So muscle memory is a great thing to have because if you've got to a certain point, like if you see a bodybuilder and he doesn't train and he loses his muscle, if he goes back to the gym, he'll train a little bit and those muscles will pop again. That's due to muscle memory. But uh, if you have an injury and the longer you have that injury, your muscle pulls in a certain way or you lean and that muscle shortens, you're going to struggle because that muscle memory is going to keep that muscle in an incorrect position. And uh, it's just one of those things where you have to work on that, that muscle memory, train that muscle to lengthen and relax. And it's just a process. So go back and watch my videos. Um, I've got a whole bunch of videos on step-by-step -step what to do. Diaphragmic breathing is probably number one because you take that strain off your scalene muscles and your pec minor muscles and you breathe properly. You get a fuller breath. You don't feel as lightheaded. Because with TOS, I was feeling like somebody was holding my throat and I was constantly lightheaded and I'd, I'd see stars every time I stood up. And it's not a nice feeling. You feel like you can't do anything. You, you sit down and you're too scared to get up because you're already in pain and then you're standing up and then you feel like you're going to black out. So uh, I've got a lot of steps, a lot of things that I've, that I've helped a lot of people with. I don't even know how many people I've helped already. And it's people that haven't had surgery all the way through to people that have had surgery on both sides bilateral first rib resections and pec minor releases so these little steps taking it step by step and doing slight stretches here slight, slight movements and getting that muscle in the correct position and using the right muscles to breathe all these little things help you in the long run to feel better and stay feeling better and recover from tos I'm not saying that you're going to 100 percent recover from tos but I'm back to boxing since all of this, and I'm, I'm hitting much harder now without getting any flare-ups. Um, I'm hitting the punching bag way harder than I am, than I ever did before TOS. So my highest measure G-force was 25.5 G, and I could not hit harder than that. Um, last year this time, I was already feeling great, and I already didn't have TOS symptom, symptoms. Um, my hardest that I could hit was 35 G, and that was really pushing it. I, I, I struggled and I was frustrated that I couldn't get harder than 35G on a left hook. Um, and I just didn't know what to do anymore. Um, this whole year, I've, I've taken a different approach to training and not training hard at all. Um, just training carefully and building up the stabilizer muscles and still getting stronger and stronger. And two weeks ago, I hit my hardest punch ever. And it didn't even feel like I was throwing properly. I, I just threw, I threw a left hook and it felt good. It felt like it connected properly. Um, when I checked the measurements, I thought to myself, hopefully it's more than 35G because that really felt good. And when I looked, it was 45.5G. So from before TOS, I was, I was already having a problem there that I didn't realize because I couldn't go harder than 25G. And now after TOS, I'm hitting almost double 45.5 g is a, is a crazy punch um to keep consistently punching hard I'm, I'm averaging about 30 g on all my punches which is insane i was never that strong before tos so i obviously had that underlying issue that i didn't realize and uh now that i'm sorted and now that i'm worked on my posture and and stabilizing muscles and, and making sure that i'm i'm correct i'm in the correct posture just everything is just functioning properly I don't have tightness and shortness of breath like I used to. I, I've got a better range of motion. I'm actually more flexible now than I was ever before TOS because I never stretched as much. So it's all these little things that changing your lifestyle actually can help you. If you don't have any problems, just stretching and, and keeping a balance within your body, not just overtraining and just weight training or just doing cardio, just a balance of everything that you're doing, whether you're sitting in the car, the way you're breathing, just balance everything out to keep your body healthy and you'll see benefits just taking it slowly. So I'll see you guys in the next episode. I want to cover as much things step by step as I can and 
and do almost like a checklist of, of things to start with, like diaphragmic breathing and working your way up. So you, you've got a checklist for yourself. You can see where you should be starting and building yourself up slowly, slowly, instead of trying something that doesn't work and going back and forth between between all the information out there. just want to do something that I did, follow the plan that I, I made myself. I basically just studied further and adapted certain exercises and stretches that normal people can do and people that have an injury can't do and got my own twist on them to maybe stretch around it and do that same movement in a slightly different way so that you don't aggravate your your shoulder and aggravate the brachial plexus and move that rib even tighter so just certain things that i've done focusing on thoracic outlet syndrome so you're doing those movements that may seem easy but when you've got tos they, they're actually not that easy but with that twist it just helps you helps get that muscle stronger without compromising your health so i will see you guys soon in the next episode and hopefully this this uh, video helps please subscribe like and share because i can't get out my videos out there i just share it to youtube and to the facebook groups and there are lots and lots of people there's still more people joining the facebook groups asking the same questions that i cover but it's so difficult getting my videos out there to everybody and i know that when i was looking for information there was there was no videos on tos there were very few and it wasn't what i was looking for it was people that had, had surgery and basically just pushing one idea of the surgery and not the physical therapy side and even sometimes the physical therapy side is not it's not brought in the in the right way for tos the the physical therapists don't really all know about tos and they make things worse so at least i've been through it personally and i know what's helped me and i know what has helped other people i've helped so many people and if we can get this information out there more and more people that are doing the same things we can help people before it gets too late when they're struggling and they're losing losing years of their life due to tos or frozen shoulder i've literally just seen a video the other day of an nba player on uh, espn and they're not taking him seriously because he's got tos but he doesn't have any physical symptoms I haven't, I haven't read of all the symptoms that he has. I want to go back and, and look at it properly. But they're basically saying that he's been to so many professional doctors and they can't find anything wrong with him. And now they're saying that he's crazy because there's no physical limitations and they've done ultrasound and there's, there's nothing there. But with TOS, it's, it's tricky because it, your arm has to be in a certain way before you can actually see the compression. And it's so slight that most doctors are missing it. So I saw that the other day and it's people don't have enough information on TOS and that's the problem. So if you know of someone that's struggling with upper back pain or any back pain or neck pain or shoulder pain, share the video with them, help them find the channel. And the more we can get it out there, the more people we can help recover. So I'll see you guys soon in the next episode and uh, hope you feel better.